releasing anger, pent up anger, so you don't get sick. So you don't get sick anymore. I'm holding on to it. This has been an ongoing lesson for me. Sometimes we get so used to stuffing emotion that we don't even know. Hey, Joe, thank you so much for the love. Ah, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I see that. I appreciate that. I wish the lighting was a little bit better in here. Hello, Miss Pam. Yes, Lisha. Mendoza shark. <laughs> Do I know you personally? Oh. So, nope, today I'm going to be explaining more about the emotional body. Thank you for the hearts. I'm going to be explaining about the emotional body. We're going to be talking about breaking free from that. We're going to be talking about creating a safe container for your emotions. We're going to be talking about how as you heal, different emotions are going to be coming up. I have so much to talk about today. We have about an hour to help you break through and um, see if you want to go deeper and join for the three days. Thank you so much for the love. Hello, Christina. Welcome. Um, for the three days, we're doing the 12th, 13th, and 14th for Rediscovering Me. Hello, hello. So we're going to be talking about bottled up emotions. Bottled up emotions. And for so many of us, the emotions that are so normal, they just feel normal. We don't even recognize it. Right? Emotions. I know I didn't. Even this year, even this week, I'm recognizing how I've covered up um, some of my uh, normalized, some my level of tolerance, my level of upset, my level of stress in my life, how I've normalized when things, when I get chips on my shoulder, right? <laughs> so if you've normalized emotion in your life being like, well, this is just how life is, or if it's become such a norm for you that um, you don't even recognize it. You're like, oh, I'm not angry, All right? Because your anger, your anger tolerance level is at an eight, hey? Okay? And you grew up with your anger tolerance level at an eight, your chaos level at an eight. And so you don't even notice it until you're an eight and a half, right? But by then it's already eaten at your body because we really want our emotional levels to be at about two or a three, Okay, when they get above a five, then it is, it can, it can wreak havoc. It starts, it starts to affect your, um, your body. When we are raised in or live in an environment of chaos, of stress, of chips on your shoulder, of anger, of ridicule, of sadness, of guilt tripping, right? Of criticism. Then we have, we have, we have normalized stuffing. So if you can understand this, say yes in the comments. We've normalized stuffing. It's just how we live and we don't realize it until it's gone and we feel uncomfortable or exhausted. Yes, yes, yes. I'm getting lots of yeses here. Perfect. So this conversation in many of my clients with BPD and um, fear of abandonment and rage fits and severe depression, what happens is as you're coming out of this, as your body is releasing and trusting you more, getting healthy, you begin to recognize emotions within yourself that you think are foreign, but they're actually emotions that you've been experiencing on the daily forever that have been holding you back, keeping you stuck. So um, when I teach the Amazing You Journey, hey, welcome. When I teach the Amazing You Journey, we go over a lot of different emotions. I have a whole packet of emotions that my clients go through to really 
oh, they're up here, to really look at the, the layers of your emotions. And many of um, survivors of abuse, we learn to be regulated, right? We're regulated and we regulate ourselves through these dense emotions that are like stuck rocks. And when you are trying to move a rock, maybe a big ass boulder up a hill, and you're trying to do it yourself, it barely budges. And so the manifestations, the joy, the, the happiness, the success, the wealth that you deserve and you want is hard to come by because you're pushing this rock up the hill. You're using emotions, energy and motion, your life force, these rocks up a hill to, to barely get there. Now, the fucked up thing, you guys, the fucked up thing is, Everybody in the world, our, our media, our social media, all of this stuff, hello, hello. Um, if you're not following, make sure to follow. Um, all of these things over here is regular uses these lower frequencies to keep us stuck. So if you've had one year after another dealing with the same bullshit, different face, different story, different saga, different lack of bank account, different stuckness, right? Then, um, then join in. And if you want to join in, um, I think you can just say join because I opened it up. We're going to do Q and A and questions here. So if you're joining in, um, Nico's welcome. If you're joining in on the chat, um, oh. know that we're going to do some, some coaching here. So you can mute yourself until, um, but I'll call you. I'll call you right after Christine. So you guys are just getting in line. We're going to do some coaching. Because my intention today is to help you move from, from this stuck place and having like repeat, repeat, repeat stress in your life to, to more. And I'm going to explain some practices that I do with my clients. One particular practice being the, the no practice. And we're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to rock that out. Pam, you're next. Okay. So let me talk about these stages, these emotions, and if they've been regulated by you, you might even see them as a positive thing, or you might be really annoyed with them. So the first one that comes up is shame and shame and guilt look a lot of like, a lot of like, and true shame. Okay. Makes us pause. It's good. We go, Ooh, you stop. And you're like, Oh my gosh. I, I did that. I did that. I'm being that way, right? I'm being that way. And I'm, I'm ashamed of being that way. And you pause and then you change, right? So it's an action of that pause and that change. But so many survivors of abuse, we are shamed into things. So shame was normalized and used against us to get us to not do things like shame. Little kids shouldn't speak. They should be heard, right? Shame. You need to be on a diet 24 seven. Shame. And the world shames us, right? Shames us with Gucci bags and, and you're not enough and all of this stuff. So shame, look at how shame is being used in your life and look at how you use shame for yourself. Two, embarrassment. Well, I'll be embarrassed if I do that. If I tell them that, if I'm vulnerable and I say this, if I have to change, if I go out and I present this this new idea that I have, my business fails. If, if I go out on a date and it, he's not my end all be all, then that's that, right. So this, this is the, this is the shame. Self-pity. I don't know if you guys have been around for a while. I know some of you have on here, but I went through a huge shift in self-pity a year ago. I'm um, coming into 2023 where I had to look at how I was addicted for lack of a better word to self-pity did i see it as self-pity no i used it was like i had reasons i had sadness i had i had shame and guilt right you can call it victim mentality but it was more than victim mentality it was more of a um justified reasons like it was real right the, the victimhood was real i was victimizing myself right and that self in that self-pity um, but 
victim mentality even is a guilt trip, right? It's a guilted, it's a guilted trip to keep people in that stuck. Oh, well, you're just victim mentality. And it doesn't validate the victimhood, right? That we went to through that got us there. So that's a different subject. The other one is failure. So fear of failure or like this overachieving, overachieving, right? So we didn't feel like a failure, running from failure, always feeling like a failure, running from failure. Okay. So these are the, these are the, the emotions that keep you stuck. This is the energy in motion and it shows up as trying to control people, trying to control your situation, um, hiding, criminal, um, really but looking for things to worship or wanting people to worship you, um, total hiding and fear. Okay. So that's a lower, lower vibration. Second vibration here of stuff that keeps things stuck is, um, a feeling of apathy. All right. Just fuck it. Fuck it. It's done. A feeling of hopelessness, which is really close. All right, so we get stuck with this hopelessness that tells the story is I don't have enough money and I don't have a this. So you attract somebody else, another partner that comes into your life and drains your bank account, another person that comes into your life and doesn't doesn't help you out, another opportunity that you pass by and say, I can't because of some excuse, right? There's that. There's grief. There's true grief that we have to walk through when we lose somebody or something, right? And then there's there's the grief that you continuously put you through, put yourself through numbness numbing out we can do this through drugs alcohol um, shopping gambling addiction we can numb us out by just stuffing our feelings and pretending like everyone else's feelings are more important than ours right and being overly compassionate and understanding i did a, a whole video on that yesterday terror and fear okay terror and fear and um and despair and hurt um, are grief and shame in the same frequency? No. Um, shame is way lower and grief is a little bit higher. It's a phase two. So it's in, it's in the, um, the hundreds. Okay. Then we move on to, um, the energies that start to move things. Okay. So anxiety, anxiety actually is a frequency that starts moving things. So we have like the rock, the lower despair. Then we have like the muddy water, right? That you're trying to like trudge through, but you can get through. That's the hurt and the grief and the terror. I lived in a terror response for decades of my life. When I released terror and really got to see, wow, everything is terror. Wow, pony boy, thank you, love. That's so cool. I appreciate you too. It was like, wow, it was a big shift, right? So we're gonna be going deeper into this in the Rediscovering Me three-day event, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. If you really wanna see like where you are and how you're processing it and actually go through practices to move these deeper emotions, um, we're gonna be doing that the 12th, 13th, and 14th, okay? So um, definitely come, definitely register, just click the link and register. Um, but these, these emotions that start to move things, thank you, love, is um, empathy, right? Empathy. Empathy moves things. Wow. Having empathy for yourself, having understanding for yourself, right? That's that's a huge thing. Hate. Hate moves things. Ah, thank you, Christine. Um, so it moves things. Hate moves things. Um, anger. Anger is huge. I will take my clients and I'll move them into anger to shift that reality from from the shame and the regret and, and the pissed offness, right? They're like, I can't be upset. I can't be upset. I want to be a nice girl. I want to be a good girl. I want to be a good human. I want to be understanding. I want to be compassionate. And they're scared of anger. When we use anger in a safe container, which I want to talk and we'll do a practice today about, then whew, you can move mountains. You literally can move mountains because it is that safe container, okay? So anger is a big motivator, a big mover. The next is pain. Okay, physical pain, mental pain, being in pain, acknowledging pain, um, being uncomfortable is required for change. Absolutely, Rosie. Absolutely. Um, pride. Okay, being proud of something, pride in yourself too, and your accomplishments, what you've been through, right? And courage, courage to do this. One thing I know about anybody that works with me is that you guys are the most courageous fucking no bullshit, getting through this stuff, strong, motivated, 
the buck stops here. Look at yourself, love yourself, learn to love yourself, people in the entire world, in the entire friggin' world. Okay, these last emotions that really do move things quickly, um, we don't understand as trauma survivors. So it's really hard to tap into it. We understand a lower dimension of them. So love is one. Okay, love is one. Cheerfulness, joy, happiness is one. Enthusiasm is one. Enthusiasm is one. Exhilaration is one. And peace. So discovering that exhilaration, that peace, that love, what that means to you. And then really looking at the rest of the scale and going, hmm. So we're going to be doing this deeply in Rediscovering Meme. It's a three-day event. I'm going to be walking you through the change. So we're going to be activating your power body of your emotional body. And we're going to be walking through the change. It is um, leading into the Amazing You journey. And you are going to love it. Okay, so registration is open for that. It is going to be on Zoom. And we're going to go deep. Okay, so I'm going to open up the lines. So I'm um, Kristen. Go ahead and open up your line. And let's move through like where you're at now into something um, or ask any questions or whatever you want. I'm here to support you. So well, hello. I think I just want to share more about my journey. I know you know very well about my journey. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris knows about my journey. I actually got to meet her not long ago in a, in a. Cool. So you opening to, are you open to coaching around that? Yes. Okay. So, oh, so what I was going to say is that, um, I wanted to share a little bit about, uh, some of the points that you brought on board about mm -hmm. the, um, the shame. And I think mm -hmm. one of the things about shame that a lot of people do not know about, I was homeless. And for example, when I went through homelessness, I'm no longer homeless. Uh, when I share my story, a lot of people will immediately assume that I was a drug addict or alcoholic and or I was beaten or something negative happened to me and I put myself in that position where it had nothing to do with that. I was a successful nurse. Uh, unfortunately, I was involved in a near fatal, two near fatal car accidents in the same year. I ended up with severe injuries. I was alone and then I ended up losing everything all of a sudden yeah. it was also when COVID was happening. So with that being said, um, at that point, you know, if I ever had any fear of failure, I, mm -hmm. I overcome, I was able to overcome that. You were able to process it. So that gift yeah. to you was, okay, now I'm now there, like I've experienced the failure, right? The accidents helped you to experience the failure. And so you could look at that and process it. And now it's no longer a fear. Yes. Yeah. And um, with that being said, I was away. I didn't have anyone in, anyone to help me, not only that, but I had a severe head injury. So it was kind of hard to process. Ah, where'd she go? Can you see me? Yep, I can hear you in again. Okay, I'm sorry about that. And then, um, just want to go through this very quickly. Um, I was guided, uh, family members took me over. I ended up being abused by that, by those family members. I had severe emotions. I didn't know what I was going through. Um, this is completely okay. unrelated to the subject, but I was going through my spiritual awakening. And when I was going through all that, um, there were points where I just did not want to be here anymore on earth. And it was very hard to process. And one of the things that uh, at that time, Dr. Antika taught me was to stop, feel, process, and integrate in order to heal. Feel those emotions, let them go through your body and then be able, um, and let, let them go, you know, mm -hmm. and, coming from a culture where we have been shamed for feeling anger um i wasn't able to process anger and then mm -hmm. the shame coming from the abusing behavior too mm -hmm. and i think doctor um at that time and i'm very thankful to dr antica because at that time when i was in one of those times when i was um i didn't know where to go what to do she gave me the courage to um, build up the steps to, okay, you're in this position. What are you going to do about this? You have to make your own steps about this. And I did, 
and I escaped. And you did. That's the whole thing you did. But I remember at the time, you also didn't really recognize the abuse because you had lived in it. Yes. It was normalized for a yes. long time. I remember when you were like, I think they're abusing me from an adult perspective, but they've been treating me like this my whole life. Yes. Right. And we went through, we went over that on, yes. on a live, on a safe, secure and successful. I was not able to recognize the abuse. I was yeah. only able to recognize the abuse when I started talking to you because it's normalized to the point the shame is being normalized to yes. the point the self pity is being normalized and yeah. then you become hopelessness. And then yep. I was at a point where I felt kind of a stuck and I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do. And I never been diagnosed with depression, but I believe you mentioned maybe you're going to depression and I couldn't recognize that because I never did go through that. So yeah. you helped me recognize those um, faces yeah. that I was unable to recognize to the yeah. point that you're like, okay, wait. But then up. you got angry. And Wait, then you got out and then you got a Wait, job, right? Yes. Uh, like, and, and then th started things, things started moving, right? Yeah. So she, what she used you guys, can I, can I use this as a beautiful example? Sure, and thank you so much for sharing with me how, how these lives affected you. That's freaking yes. I knew that, but yes, I'm still <laughs> celebrating. Um, so she rec first it was acceptance. She had to recognize and it's a hard thing when you look at your family and you're like, wow, this is toxic. Hey, wow, I'm feeling worse and worse each day. But when we're in an environment of emotional and mental abuse, it's not like it's not physical. Right. And so it's not recognized, but it can affect you much more. It affects that heart. It affects that self-love. It affects that self-image. So being able to see that. And then she used upset and rage to be like, you know, what? even though I have these things, I'm going to overcome it. Right. And I remember one day I was like, just start looking for jobs. And you were like, I can't. And I'm like, well, you can stay with the excuse or you can look for a job. Right. Yes because you're going to rescue you. And there's, you, you are a successful nurse. Like you can do this. You had two bad accidents, but you can do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I remember the day you were like, oh, I took a bus for this, that we, ha we got you um bus money. Yeah. I took I four buses know. one way. So it was eight buses in one day under a hundred degree weather. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no, you're this. Good. I took my rage and I turned it into my power. Yes. Yes. Eight buses, a hundred degree weather, you guys, to get a freaking job and get it done so she could get out of the abuse. I mean, I that joke. is, and she took like, she took her rage, right? So in the event that we're going to host, I'm going to move to the next person now, Christina, but thank you so much for sharing. In, in the event that I'm going to host, we're going to walk through this, right? Because that's the shift and we're shamed for rage, but it's about creating a safe container to to use your rage. It's about creating safety to create movement. So instead of screaming and yelling at mom and dad and the family, instead of going into a room and crying and isolating and not allowing herself to feel the rage and feeling shame that she had emotion, she fucking got on eight buses and said, I'm going to go to these interviews. I'm going to be out all day. I remember you stayed out for like probably was it like at least a month, I think. Like every day she would just leave the house before her parents got up and come home after they went to bed. Yes. You know, I will hide in just to stay away from the abuse and have a place to sleep. I will right? hide in the staircase outside with the high degree. Yeah. But with it, it was it was hard and it was really hot outside and I will stay in, in a stairwell that I found that was my safe space. But at least that brought me peace and I didn't have to be exposed to the abuse. Yes, yeah, so and she'd have her phone. Like it was amazing. And I want to hear the rest of your story. So let's connect outside of this. And and um I'd love to have you at the event. That would be awesome. Even if you can just come the weekend if you work. Um, love I you just so very, much. Just wanna let you know very quickly that um that job. I got other jobs. I was promoted and now working as a cardiology nurse and I live two blocks away from work and I don't even have to pay for transportation. It's like such a blessing. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
and and yes, 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 yes. yes this is so this is excitement you guys you know what this i recently found this is, out whew. do you know yes. what i recently then my parent because i left my family behind i never looked back yeah my family they lost the apartment that they used to humiliate me for Mm. so and i'm the one in, in a better situation that they that they were but they are oh right now gosh. yeah oh beautiful thank you so much for sharing okay um nikos welcome hello hello how can i serve you hi. today hi can everyone hear me i can yes yeah, so i think Perfect. everyone can Okay, so Lisha is my first time here, actually. Uh, yeah. I just saw you and I just joined. Um, Welcome. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually, because uh, this is so relevant for me uh, because I'm in a place right now where I've experienced some trauma, let's say, like five years ago, which okay. led me to being diagnosed with somatic symptom disorder. Mm -hmm. um, but so where's the pain? Uh, the pain. Do you mind me asking you questions first off? Can I, can I, yeah, I don't yeah, know you, sure, so sure, can yeah. I ask yeah, questions? I do, yeah. Feel free to not answer if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, um, yeah. So where's the somatic pain? Uh, so it manifest uh, at the beginning, it was manifesting mostly on my right side of the body. Okay. Uh, but I mean, uh, it could be anywhere right now. Uh, okay. I mean, it just kind of, uh, it's a travel, it's a traveler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it depends of what kind of emotion am I repressing mm -hmm. or suppressing? Because after all these years, I understood that this was emotions. It wasn't. Exactly. Just, yeah. So what he just said, you guys, is so important. I want everyone to take that in because yeah. your physical pain is emotions. And where your emotional body lies in your body is actually your fascia, your connective tissue, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of connective tissue issues coming up and, and diseases coming up with overstretching. I forget the name of it, but one of my good friends has it. Um, Andler Standards, I think it's called. And um, it's an emotional issue. It's stuffing emotions. It's not letting emotions run. It's not understanding emotions. It's making emotions wrong. It's trying to control your emotions rather than being in control of your emotions, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yes. So when you heal that somatic practice, which we're also going to be doing in Rediscovering Me through somatic practices, you are going to integrate your emotional body with your physical body and begin trusting yourself with your emotions. And these things will disappear. Elders Danlos, yeah. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, that that was my kind of. I mean, in the beginning, I, I couldn't even understand what it was. I mean, everything was so repressed within my body, so I was just I couldn't feel any kind of emotion. I was I was feeling just physical pains. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I was super disoriented in the beginning uh, until like the first movement started with some emotions rising um yeah but right now i'm uh it's like i'm in a place where it's kind of difficult to understand i, I don't really feel my emotions yet there are times there are good times where i can feel them there are times where i, where I cannot the times that i can feel my anger i'm super like grateful when i feel it mm -hmm. uh, because it feels like powerful you know it's yeah i, I have missed so much of my emotions lately, like the, these last five years, where anything I can feel, I'm just feeling, oh, yes, I need this. I really need this emotion right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, my problem is that, for example, if I get angry with someone and I don't put my, um, uh, what, what do you say them, barriers? No. Um, boundaries? Boundaries, yeah. So, yeah, I block myself every time I, I feel that I need to put boundaries and then mm -hmm. that feeling, if I suppress it, then it becomes like inflammation in my body. Yep. And yeah, so yeah, I'm in this place right now where I need to understand how to create that safe space that you guys talked about. Perfect. Uh, for myself. Well, let's go into it a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. I'll share some of these things with you. Okay, yeah, sure. tools, tools that we use. And then um, I'm doing a big event about 
where we're going to integrate all of the body. So the emotional mm -hmm. body is one body, the physical body is one, the mental body is one, and then you have an etheric field, which is another. Mm -hmm. And of course, your soul is in, in the house, right? Oh, cool. I didn't know you were and, into um, Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to integrate all those in three days. We're going to do activations and integrate those in three days. Um, mm -hmm. The link is in my bio, but my you can take my website too. The link is there, lishaantica.com. If you want to join and we'll really go deep in, mm -hmm. into this so, and for you specifically. But um, so things that I use to help process that emotion um, is a plan. So the first thing is getting together a plan of like, what are the normal go to emotions that you think you feel? And one thing with emotion is a, sometimes we can't feel it because it's, we've been normalized not to. And or they've been deemed bad. And for men, I know that this is even a bigger issue, right? Because they're like, mm -hmm. don't be a man, don't feel. So yeah, I don't know cool. what you were raised in, if you're raised in that environment that actually glorified being emotionless, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. But but if so, it's an even bigger deal for you. Um, so building trust. So one thing that you can do is kind of figure out like, what do I normally feel? And there's states of being, so you can figure this out, not necessarily by sensation, right? Especially if you're having somatic stuff going on, sensation mm -hmm. might be your last key, but you'll be able to know what you're feeling by ways that you speak to yourself. Okay. So I call these states of being, and they're, they're the mental mind connecting to the physical body, connecting mm -hmm. to the emotional body. I mean, going, try, trying to be like, well, I just feel like a total failure, right? I'm just failing yeah, everything, that's, whatever. That's no matter what I do, there. I can't hide. No matter what I do, I can't hide. No, <laughs> fuck it. I'm nothing, right? Fuck yeah, it. it's something like that, to be honest. <laughs> right? Yeah. So those are phase one states of being. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you examples of each one, you guys. And of course, we'll go deeper in rediscovering me. So phase two uh, states of being might sound like SI right? I just want to die. Like, what's the point of this? Right? It might sound like, um, well, this is useless. That's useless. They're useless. I'm useless. Everything is useless. Um, it might be a storytelling. Well, I'm just undeserving. I need more education. I need more this. I need more that. Yeah. Right? Um, it might be victimhood. So this is the victim mentality, mm -hmm. right? No mm -hmm. matter what I do, it's not good enough. Everybody hates me. I can't invest in that. I don't have $47. I don't have 222. I don't have anything. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. that whole, um, excuses, excuses, excuses kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it can be numbing. So it can be a abusive substance and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. so that's phase two. That's kind of what it looks like. It's, oh, I need her, I need him. It could be sex, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, phase three is boredom. Yeah, okay? oh my God. Boredom yeah. is a big one. Um, I'm bored or monotony, monotony, like doing the same thing day in and day out. And oh, life is just what it is. I, I get what I get, whatever it is, right? Um, just disinterested, right? So you're telling mm -hmm. yourself like, I don't really care about anything. I don't care, I don't care. Um, it could be courage, right? I'm going to pull up my, my big boy pants and I'm going to go for it. Right? Yeah. Um, it could be, um, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Right? Mm -hmm. It has more oomph behind it, but there's, you're still pushing that border like yeah. up, up the hill. Right. Yeah. And it could be just a neutral feeling like whatever. Um, and then the phase four, the ones that we all want to feel, but we don't feel all the time. Hello. Hello. Is, um, um, conservatism. So like seeing everything as a neutral, like everybody, you know, like loving everybody the same, right? Like, it's like, yeah. oh, that, not the political one, but the, <laughs> like, like just balanced, <laughs> balanced okay. um, purposeful, right? Feeling purposeful, finding your yeah. purpose, standing in your mm -hmm. purpose, um, serenity of beingness. Okay. So mm -hmm. feeling at one with one another. Yeah. Enlightenment. Okay. So the other phase, if you're not in touch with your feelings and, um, is really going, okay, well, that's how I'm talking to myself. The other thing is watching your actions because your emotions your, are your energy in motion and your emotions are going to move your actions, right? Have you ever, um, been driving someplace you drive? Yep. Okay. So um, you've ever been driving someplace and you think about something else and then all of a sudden you're going to work when you meant to go to the store? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Promotion right? probably happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, and you're just like zone out, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, of course. Um, another thing that's really common is like your body will be hungry, so you just like get up and you go and you open up the refrigerator door and you're just standing there going, "What am I doing here?" Right? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's an emotional hunger. It's not a mental or a physical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah. So these are actions. So you're you're also going to actions. So um, phase one actions. I'll just go through a few. Um, are criminal actions, are mm -hmm. hiding, right? Um, I didn't realize I was stuck in phase one for a long time, but I was hiding behind work and school. I didn't yeah, do anything yeah. in my community. I was hiding out. Um. I got a divorce and when I got a divorce, my husband was president of Rotary and president of the Chamber of Commerce and like we were very active in the community and I just shrunk and went into a hole. And I didn't realize that for years. I was stuck in that self-pity, right? But it didn't show up until I could really feel it and realize it and feel it in my yeah. body. Um, but it presented as hiding, okay? Yeah. Sacrifice and self-sacrifice, right? I'm the only one that can do it okay right oh and Lord, then yes. all of the um narcissistic mm -hmm. and, and borderline things so these are i'm um, worshiping bodies needing bodies approval of bodies owning bodies protecting bodies controlling bodies blame and mm -hmm. um false accountability so phase two are dying and it could be dying inside right letting mm -hmm. a project die um, letting relationships die. It could be SI. Um, making amends. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If you find yourself doing that, you guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Right? That's a hopelessness, numb, terror, despair, emotion in action. Um, propitiation, which I always forget what it means. So whatever. Self-abasement, beating yourself up. Right? Just kicking your own ass. Yeah. Phase three, if you're stuck in a phase three one, um, is covert hostility, okay? Unexpressed resentments, mm -hmm. this was big for me. No sympathy, hostility, mild interest, and antagonism, right? So you'll catch people antagonizing, doing this. It's because they're having these feelings of anger and despair and, and or desire. Like they want something, but they can't have it or haven't figured out how they have it. Mm -hmm. um, and then happiness is willingness, acceptance, strong interest, um, actions, games, um, worship. Yep. Okay. So we're leaning into that. So you can look at what you're, what you're going through. I gave you guys a whole list. <laughs> so I know it's like one little thing. Like but you can kind of see kind of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see yourself where you're at. And then it's about learning how to move yourself up the scale. Okay. Yeah. So we want to use acceptance. Mm-hmm and go into that emotion go okay well i'm doing i'm going and doing hiding so obviously i'm feeling some embarrassment or i'm feeling some self-pity or i'm feeling some shame and then you're like huh what is where do i feel that in my body and your body will show you when you ask so this is the yeah. next thing i want to teach you today your body will show you when you ask to do something mm -hmm. okay and and you're like oh there it is then blackout journaling it's this free writing blackout journaling. And this is like huge because you can write fuck a hundred times. You can write no a hundred times. You can do whatever. <laughs> but blackout journaling literally deletes the story. It's yeah. in an action, right? So your body is moving to yeah. it. So you're, we'll It's like expressing more, your emotion or something. Yeah, we'll your do emotions. more um, somatic practices at the event mm -hmm. where you're actually moving through the emotion. But um, it is where you write over. So if you write one page or half a page of just, oh, this is coming up in my body. I'm feeling like this. I'm acting like this. I'm telling my brain is telling me the story that I am this. These are various states of being or I am statements. Do, 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 do. And then um, you rewrite over what you originally write. Okay. So the okay. same page, you don't turn the page, you just write straight over what you originally wrote. And what it does is it dissolves, resolves, transforms, transmutes, and transcends it at that moment. You're deleting yeah. it, deleting it as you write mm -hmm. over. And I'll write five pages of crap over each other. This is how I journal my negative stuff I don't want to carry with me. Yeah. And then at the bottom of that page, you can go, oh, this, this was the emotion I finally got to. 
This was the expression mm -hmm. I finally got to. This was the state of being, the self-judgment that I'm ready to transcend. I'm ready to move forward. And then you can find the resources. Then you can hire the therapist or coach or, or take the class or go and do something different or develop a different habit to start transforming that in your life so the somatic symptoms yeah. go away. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> that was a big, thank you so much. I just oh, taught no, a whole class you. there, you guys. Thank him for a class. Thank you <laughs> for a whole class. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, Miss Pam, hello. And if anybody else wants some coaching, um, Hello, love coaching. How are I you? am here. Just go ahead and request and I'll pop on. Hello, hello, love. What's happening? Oh, nothing much, but everything all at the same time. Good. <laughs> um, just a little bit for the people that don't know. I mean, I've been working with Lisha for two years now. Mm. Um, my husband unalived himself and I took all of the blame for years. And so after all of that, I come to realize that I have been emotionally abused for quite some time. And now I ain't emotionally abused anymore. Everybody can kick rocks because I do me. And I do what needs to be done. And I do it within myself first. Taking the coaching class and everything, and then taking the Amazing You program, I found out that I'm pretty amazing. Yeah, you are. Um, and then, you know, some things happened in, in finances and stuff, and went and got a job. And two days after getting a job, they have asked me to train to be a manager. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so. And because you're a great leader. Yeah. And I mean, it's just that, you know, I'm an empty, I'm fixing to be a totally empty nester. My daughter's 15. I was going to say, she's, she's not never, 18 yet. She's yeah, 15. no, she's never at home. I'm just second grade mayonnaise to her now. It's just mom. like, mom, go away. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, fine, I will. And then I went to work and she's like, mom, why aren't you ever at home? I was like, look, you need to make up your mind. But <gasps> oh, that's funny. Everyone... Well, you were always there. I mean, that was a beautiful thing about you and your parenting is you've been so present for your kids because your parents weren't present for you and you've been their safe space and i think in the end like that's gonna really pay off for them even though she's going through normal grow up distance yourself push pull yeah she calls me she called me at work today and she's like mom i forgot how to do this and i'm like okay this is how you do it and then the girl kind of just looked at me at work and i was like i'm sorry my family comes first yeah. And then I'll deal with a job. But, um, yeah, most definitely you doing this class is going to help so many people. So many people. Oh. And knowing that, you know, I don't have to have anyone other than myself to be behind me and to support me is amazing. I went through the grieving process, not only of my husband, but of family members that are still alive mm -hmm. and what I wanted them to be, what I expected them to be. But I can't expect me as a mother from anybody else trying to be a mother to me. You know, yeah. I can't expect any of that. And it was really hard. And I, I grieve instances all the time but i grieve those because it's like what i wanted out of life not what life really is yeah and you know if i want a relationship with people that's fine but i don't need parents anymore i'm a grown woman yeah 
and my parents. And sometimes wanted... it's just not healthy to have parents. Right. Now to have a friend that was your parent is amazing. Yeah. But there's boundaries there. Mm -hmm. I am a grown adult. I will do what I want and I will do things that I see fit. If you don't like them, then that's fine. That's something that you have to deal with. But so I how is am the, going to be that way. So how has knowing about your emotional, these phases and your emotional intelligence helped with, um, with that process, with that grief? Or has it? It has. Um, in certain ways, you, you sit there and you, with grieving, it's it's hard because it comes in waves and it comes in phases, just like the grieving process. If you don't do all of the steps of grief, then you repeat them over and over until you do them all and do them all to the best of your ability. Mine was, I couldn't get angry. Yeah. My husband not only took my husband he took my best friend. He took the father of my kids. And yeah. I had to grieve all of those people in my life. And it was really hard because anger was not something that I could have. Because so, he, he had hurt so much that he yeah. took himself. And the family and the family blamed you. So I want to yeah. talk about the no practice here um, as we come out, because I know that was a big breaking point for you. Oh, yes. Is practicing the no practice. So for a lot of survivors, there is the self shame. Right. <laughs> and there's there's self there's guilt. There's false guilt. Right. We feel guilty that somebody else did something to us. Right. Then there's this whole thing in the spiritual community, especially if you're um, in into the spirituality of things and manifestation of things and reality creation of things um that is really toxic and that is that we are a creator of our own universe so therefore you brought it on to yourself in some way um i don't believe that i don't believe it and why um i look at it much differently is because i think the how is up to god and the people around us. So how you experience grief or processing this grief could have happened a hundred thousand different ways. There's so many options, but um, it just tended to come to Pam through the loss of her husband and him taking his life. So that, that said, getting angry about that, right? When there was so much sadness and then her family, like she was saying, her family like put it put it on her. So there's self blame, getting angry about that to feel that movement, it was easier to stay in hopelessness and shame and blame. And those lower frequencies that kept her stuck for 13 years. And she didn't tell you that part. But it's true, I kept her stuck for 13 years. So to get her through the anger, we had to open up her voice, we had to open up this area of her life, right? So she could stop carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders and it did manifest physically for her when you release things the the whole the grudge manifests it kind of gets shaken loose maybe through a car accident and or something weird will happen and your body starts shaking loose very physically these somatic practices of of carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders you start relaxing here and you start opening up the throat and i love this practice called the no practice and what we do is we scream no in a primal scream, really, really loud, as loud as you can go. I like doing it underwater. I like doing it home alone. I did it this morning. I like doing it out. We did it, Pam and I, she was at the retreat up here at my my space, and we did it um, up in the middle of the mountains. And you yell no four times. So four times for the four categories, but also four times for your four primary bodies, okay? So you have a body, you are not a body, this is your physical body. So you scream no for any way that what whatever's happening to you, um, you, you are physically affected. No for everything mentally you are affected. No for everything physically you are affected. And four, no for everything in your environment that's affected by whatever you're experiencing. So you just scream, no, 
oh, so say that you can't make make rent and that's that's happening. Or you can't make your mortgage and that's happening, right? And and you don't know how to move the energy and you're you're scared and all this stuff is coming up around it. You can just scream, no, once for your body because it's going to affect you physically. No, once for your mindset because it makes you think negatively. No once for your emotions because you're feeling that fear right and no to how it affects your environment and the people around you right and you do that to to release and what it does is it it's like a it's like a ooh, shock to your system it jump starts your emotions so it jump starts the tears it jump starts the release of the shoulder it jump starts the feeling it gets the energy moving right now as Jess says here, like, don't um, put it in. Christina, welcome. She's coming to the event. Welcome, welcome. So um, you will, you will, f if you live with people, you're around people, like, tell them you're going to do this no practice, even invite them to do it with you, right? <laughs> but it helps to release that. It's also a really safe container when you're angry. So I love the no practice, the blackout journaling, and then the no practice when there's anger, really important. Yes, people will think you're crazy. My kids think I'm crazy all the time. And I actually had roommates and I needed to be doing this. It, it caused so much stress. Welcome, Christina. I'm so excited that you're gonna be at our event. Um, and so you're just feeling feeling that and releasing that with the no practice. And that helps well, me move it pam anything yes. else anybody else want to come on and um get some coached if not i'll do some more teaching around this and then i'll hop off i have clients here in a bit the only thing i have to add is if anybody has any question about going to the retreat or going to face to face meet lisha she is amazing she's short but she's amazing. <laughs> I'm short. But Thank you. I was very, <laughs> I was very intimidated <sighs> at first. I was scared to death. I had never left my kids or oh, anything. Oh yeah. She wasn't and scared of me. I'm like we had worked together for a long time. No, no, no. She was. I wasn't she hadn't traveled. You, but I had. I have not traveled since. I hadn't been on an airplane since I was 16. I'm 40 <clears throat> something. And, um, you know, that was one of the things I was traveling through an area that was a really dark place in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a lot of pent up stuff, but the week being up there for the whole week and coming home, my kids seen such a difference in me. Yes. And yes. Two miles up that mountain, you have to walk two miles back down. You know, <laughs> but it was it was it was worth, worth it. it. It was worth it. And it was worth it. And being able to we had gummies on our side or lemonade. <laughs> yeah, lemonade was good. Gummies, uh, yeah, that was good too. But you know, it's it's just getting outside of your comfort zone. <laughs> And yeah. once you step outside of your comfort zone, the there is no limits to yeah. anything. I overcome a lot of stuff. And since then, I have planned vacations with my kids and without my kids. And I am going to, I'm going to put Pam first. Good. And everybody, if you're wondering about the retreats, I know it's closed down. I had um, people renting the room. They are out now and I will never rent my retreat room ever again. It is a retreat for you. So if you're interested in coming to the all-inclusive retreat here in Alaska to spend a week focused on you with me, um, it is now open. So you are invited to reach out to me. Just PM me if you are, um, or DM me, I mean, <laughs> PM. That's you, Pam. Um, private message. <laughs> private mess oh, it is, PM or DM, huh? Um, go ahead and and do that and we'll we'll get it sorted out. I'm booking um, for this next year. All right, anybody else wanna come on and get, um, get some coaching, talk about emotions, move emotions, walk through a process with me. I am offering this time um 
Missed you too. I invited you on. You want to come on? Have an amazing day, y'all. Ah, yes. Love you, hon. Christina's asking if she can go on vacation with you. <laughs> All right, so you can ask questions here um, in, in the chat about our online retreat that is happening um, right now. This is three days, Rediscovering Me. We're going to be walking through, in those three days, we're going to be doing integration. We are going to be doing healing. We are going to be doing awareness practices. It's going to be, oh my gosh, it's going to be very interactive. We're going to be on Zoom. Um, it's my first time doing doing something like this. So I think you just say, oh, oh, I see it. Here you go. I'm accepting you, babe. Yay.